While some countries were still developing the fifth generation of fighters, Europe had already created and practically perfected its Eurofighter Typhoon. This aircraft turned out to be so successful that the European countries decided to simply skip the fifth generation, immediately proceeding with the creation of a representative for the sixth generation called FCAS, which is what we're going to cover in today's video. The Future Combat Air System is a key project for the future of French, German, and Spanish combat aviation. Its cornerstone will be the NGWS, Next Generation Weapon System, in which Next Generation Fighters, or NGFs, will employ drones, also called Remote Carriers, or RC, as force multipliers. The FCAS concept was developed within the framework of the ETAP, European Technology Acquisition Program, launched back in 2001 with cooperative work done between Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Sweden, and the UK. The main idea behind FCAS was an SOS, a system of systems, involving the joint work of manned and unmanned systems as well as combat aircraft in order to achieve maximum efficiency on the projected battlefields of the future. The international French manufacturer Dassault became the general contractor for the sixth generation fighter project. The French Safran aircraft engines and the German MTU Aero engines are working to develop the engine for it. Meanwhile, the multinational aerospace corporation Airbus has acted as the main partner and is, together with one of the largest missile manufacturers, MBDA, also responsible for the unmanned systems FCAS and ACC, or Air Combat Cloud. The French company Tails, which specializes in the production of electrical systems for the aerospace, defense and transport industries, has also joined in on the work being done on the latter, the ACC. The turning point for the future European sixth-generation fighter occurred back in 2017, when France and Germany agreed to launch the FCAS initiative. Just a year later, Spain also expressed having an interest in it, having received prior approval from other countries participating in the project. Thus, by the summer of 2019, Spain, represented by Indra Sistemas, volunteered to contribute to the project. The European fighter's active phase of development began in February 2020, after a contract worth more than $169 million was awarded, kicking off FCAS research and development over the next 18 months. Germany had somewhat strained its French allies with its national peculiarities. Where the French Armaments Department, DGA, had complete freedom of action, in Germany there was a strict principle of distributing competencies and the departments could not take any steps on their own without prior, mandatory approval from the Bundestag. Although some disagreements arose in the process regarding intellectual property rights and division of tasks after the inclusion of Spain in the project, these were soon successfully sorted out. FCAS must be as adapted as possible for various difficult combat conditions, which means that the overall flight range, payload, speed, and maneuverability of the aircraft are of key importance. The project's engineers have intentions to equip the European sixth-generation fighter with a wide array of advanced sensors, including RF, active and passive electro-optical sensors, and also advanced electronic support for detecting and intercepting different threats. According to various media reports, Indra Sistemas will take lead on the development of the next-generation sensors for FCAS during Phase 1A of the FCAS program. Their research aims to develop a connected and distributed architecture of sensors, so that the aircraft can effectively handle the tasks that may become relevant even in 2040. Indra's research will take a minimum of one year, with the possibility of a six-month extension if necessary. Among the European fighters' weapons and systems, a combat laser is also expected to be integrated at some point. Additionally, the use of swarming drones, thanks to the flexible payload bay, will allow the system to provide maximum control in the airspace, even under extreme conditions. Depending on the mission performed by the fighter, things can be modified. For example, by increasing the volume or stealth of its fuel tanks, reducing or increasing the number of drones available for launch from the aircraft compartments, as well as the total amount of ammunition. Furthermore, additional means of reconnaissance can be installed on it, such as advanced photography systems, for example. The adaptability of the fighter's architecture, as in the case of its American counterpart NGAD, suggests that the plug-and-play principle is present in the works. Thanks to this, the integration of new algorithms and different equipment will be as simplified as possible, producing a positive effect on the autonomy of FCAS, and also providing a number of various modes that do not require the presence of a pilot in the cockpit. European experts are convinced that such an approach to the dynamic reconfiguration of the device will significantly increase its survivability, 
tactical capabilities, and also cyber resilience. In order to ensure informational advantage and maximum efficiency in carrying out its mission, FCAS will interact with a wide range of other military platforms and services in the air, land, sea, and even in space. At the same time, the drones RC, will be controlled from a fully customizable virtual cockpit with advanced human-machine interfaces HMI, that include eye tracking and gesture control, thus increasing the intuitiveness for pilots and their chances of success in the given mission. The virtual cockpit will also help improve not only the planning of tasks on the ground, but also the remote control of the UAV, providing the fastest possible clarification as to what is happening around the fighter and transmission of data regarding its opponents. FCAS must work with the speed and relative cost of upgrading while simultaneously maintaining operational advantage and freedom of action in a rapidly changing threat environment. Therefore, advanced production technologies play an important role in reducing the overall cost of the future fighter. One example of cost reduction is the use of robotics during the aircraft's operation, having been adapted for refueling, re-equipment, and repair of either the aircraft or its individual components. As for the cost of pilot training, this can also be reduced thanks to the intuitive interface of the virtual cockpit and virtual mission planning system. In January of 2022, France completed the first engine tests for the FCAS, a prototype based on the M88, a Dassault Rafale engine. The researchers' primary focus was to study the response of the potential engine to high temperatures caused by the higher thrust of the future fighter. To date, two of the three FCAS project contractors, Airbus and Dassault, are still in disagreement over the launch of Phase 1B, thus leading to a prototype sixth-generation fighter being projected for 2027. This was stated earlier in March of this year by Dassault director Eric Trappier. According to Trappier, Airbus management has continued to delay the signing of the contract, and this ongoing delay will inevitably lead to a shift in the original delivery schedule for the new fighter. Meanwhile, Dassault engineers who were supposed to continue working on the prototype of this latest aircraft have been transferred to other divisions of the company for the time being. But Trappier says they will continue to work on the FCAS as soon as Airbus puts its signature on the contract. The reason for this extensive tension was also the fact that Berlin had again begun to consider the possibility of acquiring American F-35s in order to better modernize its outdated fleet. According to specialized media, the latter calls into question the interest the German side of the project may still have in the latest fighter. In addition to FCAS, there is another sixth-generation European fighter called Tempest, which is still being developed by the UK, Italy, and Sweden. Although there was an earlier rumor that the FCAS program and Tempest would eventually be merged, this still remains just a rumor. The first flight of the FCAS prototype was scheduled for 2027, and its entry into service was set for 2040. Now, due to internal disagreements, the flight may be shifted to 2030 and its commissioning to 2045. But given the fact that France and Germany have not yet reached a consensus, the project may be frozen indefinitely, or potentially, even cancelled. But what do you think? Will we see a new European fighter by at least 2030? Let us know in the comments how you envision the future FCAS aircraft. And as always, if you found the video enjoyable, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like today's. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.